Hello everyone and a massive welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to take you through how we synthesize esters. So the ester I'm going to make in all of these different methods is propyl ethanoate. And I'm going to show you what reagents are used to make it in three different reactions using this sort of spider diagram flowchart. I won't be using balanced reaction equations to summarize this, but I do actually recommend you try writing these out for yourselves using the information I'm going to give you. The name propyl ethanoate comes from the general structure to name an ester of an alkyl alkanoate, with the alkyl representing the carbon chain sections. Esters are a bit unusual from lots of other organic functional groups we study at A level as they have two carbon chain sections separated by the oxygen containing ester functional group. We name the two chains separately in turn in the name. To help you remember which goes first, take a close look at the ester functional group and you'll see that there's a single bond to oxygen section and a double bond to oxygen section. I like to remember it as the single bond oxygen section goes first and then the double bond oxygen section goes second, all the time following the pattern of alkyl alkanoate. The three carbon section followed by the two carbon section here gives us the name propyl ethanoate. My first reaction to produce this ester is one I think everyone recognises as the go-to example to make an ester and it's certainly the most familiar. It's the use of a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. You have to be really careful for all of these reactions that you select the correct length of carbon chain for your reactants in order to make a specific ester product. For example, to achieve the propyl section of my ester, I must use propan-1-ol. And to achieve the ethanoate section of my ester, I must use ethanoic acid. This is important as the carboxylic acid will always provide the section of the ester containing the C double bond O, and the other side, which only has the one single bond to an oxygen, will always come from the alcohol. I can also tell I've not used propan 2 as my choice of alcohol because the propyl section of my ester is a straight chain connected at the end to the ester functional group. The conditions of this reaction are really important. You would need to heat the reagents together with a concentrated acid catalyst such as H2SO4. All of these reactions will produce another product alongside the ester. For this first one, the other product is water. My second reaction to produce my ester uses the same propan 1 alcohol but instead of a carboxylic acid, I can use an acid anhydride. These are quite large organic structures and will react with the alcohol without the use of a catalyst. This acid anhydride is called ethanoic anhydride, despite actually having four carbons in total. It is named by considering the number of carbons in each half. The fact that there are two carbons in each half means here I give it the name of ethanoic anhydride. If the two halves had different numbers of carbons in them, then the name would extend to reflect this. For example, if one half had two carbons but the other half had three, I would call it ethanoic propanoic anhydride. I can tell I need ethanoic anhydride here because the C double bond O section of my ester functional group is two carbons long. For this reaction, in addition to the ester being made, a carboxylic acid is also formed as a product from the other half of the anhydride.
A third way to make the ester is by using something called an acyl chloride and then the same alcohol of propanolol once again. Hopefully you can see a pattern forming here. An acyl chloride, like this ethanoyl chloride, resembles a carboxylic acid and can actually be synthesized from one, except the OH is replaced by a Cl. Like the anhydride, this acyl chloride, named ethanoyl chloride, will react with the alcohol without the use of a catalyst. And this time, along with the ester product, we would also make some HCl. For this final section of the video, I'm just going to give you a showcase with my highlighters of how you can track the different carbon chain lengths in the production of our ester looking at the choice of reactants. Notice how the carbon chain section of the ester containing the C double bond O always comes from the carboxylic acid, the acid anhydride or the acyl chloride. The other section of the ester has come from the propanolol each and every time. So that's it for synthesizing esters. If you did find this video helpful, I would really appreciate if you could give it a like before you go and consider subscribing to stay updated. Also, I recommend you check the video description for any updates I have based on any external examination assessments that might give us some more clues on how esters can come up in the exam. Until next time, happy revising.